Did you hear that lonesome whippoorwill? He sounds too blue to fly. That midnight train rides alone. I'm so lonesome I could cry. Did you ever see a night so long when time goes crawling by? Just went behind the cloud. I'm so lonesome I could cry. everyone, I'm Agustin Urbano. A little bit about myself is I'm from Ridley, California. My parents are from Uriangato, Guanajuato in Mexico. I have one older sister. We both went to elementary school and middle school in the hood. Then we went to Ridley High School, it's a little nicer. She has a PhD, she's like a kids therapist or something like that. I'm a marketing major. I think it'd be really cool to get a marketing career going with like a really cool company. Or I also have like a really Huge passion for photography. I think it'd be cool to be a photo professor someday. Also, I like their work schedule, you know, I like vacation. But yeah, some of my favorite things are taking pictures, playing guitar, and skateboarding. I've been taking pictures and videos since I was like eight or nine with my mom's VHS player that I guess I later broke. I don't know, I was messing with it. I've messed with my sister's camera. That was fun. I broke, no, I didn't break that. I broke another one. I think it kind of came from me just wanting to have fun documenting things or just recording things. And then later we'd go on more and more road trips and I wanted to document it. And then at some point I'd get an iPhone 3G, so I'd take that to Mexico, I'd take like a bunch of photos, and then I'd learn about editing apps. I got like a decent job at some point and I was able to finally get a real fancy camera. And I was able to finally get another DSLR and then later another one. I was getting clients pretty soon. I got clients within like a month after getting my camera because I got used to shooting with it sooner than expected. Some of my favorite things to shoot are portraits, cars, and landscapes. Cause yes, I love traveling, so I get it gives me an excuse to go travel. I also love playing guitar. I've been playing guitar since I was nine. So I was learning to play acoustic at a really young age. Then later when I was 12, I got an electric guitar. So that was awesome. Then I'd get another guitar. I was in a couple bands and one of my favorite ones was called Limits. We'd play a lot of music all over the place we get some mosh pits going so that was a blast i still jam something that makes playing guitar a little different or special for me is i got shot i have like missing fingers like not all there so that's like because i got shot while back i was with my parents and my sister heading to visit my grandma in dinuba when i was 15 and some car on oncoming traffic just like randomly fired and it shot through the car door and nicked up this finger this finger this finger a little bit 
So the singer hanging off skin and then the rest of the bullet shot up like through my leg. I can't get a good angle, but it also shot through like about a foot of meat on my leg because I was resting my hand on my lap and it just shot randomly like that. Here's some crazy x-rays. But, um, but yeah, so there's a bullet in my leg right now, actually still too, they weren't able to get it out. I think they said that they would have to cut through muscle or a bunch of meat, then that would put me in pain for like about a year. So it might leave me worse off because it all sounds really painful. Your body might naturally push things like that out. So I don't know if, sometimes it'll occasionally hurt still. So I don't know if that's the bullet moving around or something like that, but yeah, so that's there. And despite me having a bullet in my leg, I also still love skateboarding. I've been skating since I was eight years old. My parents had just gifted me the skateboard and I took it out to the driveway. I set it down, I stood on it and I imagine I instantly started doing like a little wheelie or like a manual if you skate. So I was just, like, just the most unbalanced manual down the driveway. And I immediately, after I made contact and landing it, I immediately just like slipped out and just like hit the back of my head and I was like, that was awesome. So I got hooked ever since, so I love skating. I'm not the best at it, but I love having fun with it. It's, I don't know, it's a huge blast. I love rolling. It beats walking. It's also, I also joke and say it's my medicinal skateboard because, yeah, because if you're walking, you're walking and then if you're skating, you're just like, I wish I had some better footage of me skating, but I actually fell Tuesday on my knee pretty bad. Here's some pictures. Here's my leg right now, actually. So yeah, so I'm running out of, ew. Yeah, I'm running out of good legs, so hopefully you guys enjoy these skate clips. Yeah, I love skating. I keep falling. I fall a lot on it, but I try to land most of the time. And I think that's like the best lesson skateboarding has taught me. Don't worry about falling, worry about landing. Thank you guys for watching. And yeah, you guys take care. Two weeks before I got incarcerated, I was actually, it was, you know, by way of drugs. And then, um, two of my friends found me and they kind of like nursed me back and I remember walking along the um, railroad tracks and crying out to God and say like if you can hear me like take me away from here like, I don't want to be this person no more so two weeks later I was in jail and never went back I was born in Bakersfield, California, um, to a two-parent home. Um, I chose the wrong path at a very young age, and you know, I fell into addictions and um, into a lifestyle that comes with addiction. Um, when my parents divorced, I feel that I kind of leaned more into, you know, that lifestyle and that addiction, and I just made really bad choices and. You know, um, I ended up incarcerated at 18, and and then I ended up incarcerated again. And that time I was pregnant with my oldest child, and I ended up going to prison and I had my child there. And um, I was able to, you know, once I got out, I was able to maintain for a while, and then I fell back into my addiction. And, you know, um, I did have my kids at that time, and, um, I just made a lot of bad choices, but in two, um, 2012, I, <clears throat> instead of going and doing nine years, the judge allowed me to go to a program to finally address my addiction. Um, and I stood at that program for three years and I worked really hard on myself. And um, because I had multiple felonies, I couldn't find a job. So I decided to go with education to give myself some time to to reestablish myself and, you know, prove that I was a person worthy of, of all the things that I have now. Oh my gosh, I've known Victoria now since she was a BA student. And uh, so um, I remember her because she um, had come to see me, you know, as a BA student, and she was really interested and expressed her interest in working in child welfare. She was very passionate about social work in general, and uh, I was just really impressed with her. I was introduced to her actually uh, by Benita Washington, who's one of the, she's the BA field 
coordinator and uh, she had brought uh, Victoria you know to my attention and said Cheryl you might want to talk to her and so anyway I sought Victoria out or should I say Victoria actually sought me out she I had reached out but Victoria is not one to wait on anybody so she came and actually wanted to talk to me N knowing what she didn't want when you know what you don't want, it's easier to figure out how you're going to get what you do want. So when you come in and you say, you know what, I've, I've lived a life of incarceration, or I've been poor, or hey, you know what, I know what it is to struggle, or I know what it is not to feed my kids, or I know what it is to be raised by in a, in a household around people that are not positive. So once you've felt that and you know what that is, it's easier to determine what you want to do. And I think her knowing immediately, hey, I know what I don't want. I know I'm not going back. I know my kids deserve a good life. I know I have to do this, is the driving force. I would describe Project Rebound as a student support service on campus that helps students that are formerly incarcerated with like campus navigation. So basically like a student support service, just somewhere that like a hub that we can go to receive services and encouragement and resources and just everything that you would need to, you know, be successful academically. Project Rebound's a family. It truly is a family. Um, I've been through a really hard semester. We've had some losses in our family and um, they have been there to support me like, just like if they were my family. So the one thing I would say about Project Rebound, they are definitely family. And they care about their students. My name is Nicholas Johnson. I'm one of the drum majors with the Fresno State Marching Band. Um, we are very excited to be out here. We're here at the uh, Fresno Veterans Parade. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of uh, awesome um, what do you call it? service tunes to play um, for our veterans and everything. And I think that's really the beauty of this event. Uh, we're really, really blessed and honored to be a part of this day, um, honoring our veterans and everything. Um, this is, as we know, um, Fresno State's band is very, very community driven. Uh, we love serving our community. We love to collaborate with everyone and we really appreciate all the support that we get from our community um, to help us keep doing what we do and love. Well, um, we're playing all of the, um, what do you call it? all of the service hymns um, for each branch of the military, which is really, really cool. Um, it's a very pretty me medley and everything, so we'll be playing all of those. Um, and of course, we'll be playing some Fresno State band favorites, some of our pre-game, some of our um, drumline cadences and everything. So we're really excited for that. Um, my role here in the Marching Man is a Fresno State feature twirler. I have been doing going on my third year here. My favorite part about the Veterans Day Parade is getting to just see all the different veterans. My uncle was a veteran himself, so it's really nice to just see everyone come together and celebrate something so amazing. I've been doing the Veterans Parade since I started out in third grade um, at a baton, comp baton company in Porterville, California. 